Cardiff. Today we're looking at a recliner, but we'll also be talking about just recliners in general. And I've got Ali with me today. What model do we have here? So this is our Raphael um, Quattro recliner chair. So Quattro meaning four. Um, it's a four motor chair, so we've got so lots of different... Recliners can come in all different motors in terms of motors driving how it moves. Some single, some double, but all of a sudden now we've got four motors in chairs. So what moves in this chair? So this one, um, like the normal recliner chairs, we've obviously got backrest, we've got the um, lift function, we can bring the leg rest up independently, and we've also got a nice head adjustment and a lumbar support as well. So we've always so got that Lots of movement. So legs move, chair moves, backrest moves, headrest moves, but also a bit of lumbar, lumbar support as well. Great. So an OT loves that in terms of being able to, an occupational therapist, OT, loves that just because of the ability to just customise postural support and get people really comfortable. What are some of the, what's a disadvantage of the four motors? Well, I guess um, if you have a client who has some cognitive concerns or they might have um, memory loss, they might find this sort of hand control a little bit difficult to use. So we do have other um, options, obviously the single motor, we've only got two buttons there. But if you do have someone who's cognitively sound and able to use that hand control, it really is a great solution. Yeah, they can, even though, you know, there's only four buttons there, it can, um, when I hop in these, sometimes I'm always <laughs> like, which button am I pressing? Like everything, there's a learning curve, so you can certainly during a trial over a couple of minutes, 15 minutes, you know, working through a trial of features with a client, someone will often see if they're comfortable being able to quickly navigate that. And one of the primary reasons that that does become a safety concern if someone's able, unable to navigate that because they could get stuck in the chair. So if they're unable to navigate and then that could potentially be a falls risk if someone's um, living with a cognitive impairment, finds themselves reclined, unable to get out and they're trying to climb out. So even though it looks like a simple piece of equipment, when somebody's living with complex comorbidities and medical conditions, there can be some serious uh, clinical considerations to consider. With um, sometimes, say, older adult, person living with a disability, someone might be living with continence concerns as well. That will impact our ability to prescribe different pieces of fabric but yeah. we could have overlays and things as well. That's correct. So with the Raphael chair, we do have custom fabric options now. So there's a whole um, range of choices there. We do also have a universal chair cover um, that can be put over the top, but that is definitely a consideration if you do have someone with incontinence concerns. Yep. And then a lot of people may be living with pressure area concerns. A lot of maybe people will call it of like a you know a bed sore or a pressure sore typically clinically we will just refer to that as a pressure area so if someone maybe has a pressure area concern clinically that we've picked up an occupational therapist has picked that up is this a chair that we would consider for that or that would be something else so we do have um, a different chair in the range in our lift recline chair range um, called the airlift chair and that one is specifically designed for someone who does have pressure area concerns or pressure injury risk factors. It's made of a special Dartex material, it's breathable, it's multi-stretch, it's got an adjustable SL chamber in the seat face, so it's got a lot of additional features um, to help consider someone's pressure care risk. Yeah, and for general public, like listening to that as occupational therapists and, and allied health professionals and equipment designers, people are able to then you know, sit somebody um, on a surface and, and map that pressure and determine, okay, you know, this type of material versus air versus foam versus gel, see how that's offloading somewhat seated posture, in particular for their bony prominences, whether that's the issue tuberosity, sacrum, different areas of the body of, is that a pressure area? A lot of people living with mobility concern, complex comorbidities, may spend a lot of time sitting in a chair, so then we need to make sure that that seated, that seated pressure isn't then, you know, developed. It may have addressed one care need of transfers and comfort and posture, but we don't want to then create another problem of pressure areas. Okay. Yep. Um, safe weight limit? So it's 130 kilos for this one here. Um, we do have other sizes available as well, so the maxi chair has a higher safe working load. 
Um, there are some other features for our tech savvy users. So we do have a nice little USB port on the top there and we do have a backlit handset. So if it's dark or if we've dropped it on the floor, it's easy to find and pick it up. Again. Yeah, I quite like that feature of the USB. I think initially people could think it's like a gimmick of like, what am I going to do, charge my phone? But a lot of people may live with um, needs for like vision of like a screen reader or some sort of um, assistive technology device for a condition that they're living with. And having the ability to charge that in place where they are could actually be quite meaningful. So I, I actually like that little addition there. I think it's quite clever. Most people probably would use it for just charging a device, but there would be some people living with particular neurological conditions that may have a, a quite unique piece of assistive technology that that would make it quite easy to power up. Yeah. Anything else to cover? Um, there is lithium-ion battery backup as well. Oh, that's shares, good so that's always a good consideration. Why is that a good consideration? So in the event that we lose power, um, we do not want the user stuck with the backrest down or the leg lying rest down, having a sleep. lying down. It would be very difficult to get out of the chair. So that battery backup um, allows them to get the chair into an upright position, transfer out of it, and then figure out what's going on yeah. before they get back into the chair. Fantastic. I think we've covered most of the things to consider. Thanks so much for your time. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.